Hey friends, welcome back. It's so good to see you today for Bible class at GSNY Kids. Um, good to see you today. Uh, I'm excited to tell you a fun story. Uh, so let's uh, let's jump into a good old classic song. A song many of you may know. So it goes like this. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, oh yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, oh yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. <laughs> a quick one a short one a good one classic one of the most classic many would argue but my friends we got a fun story today so i'm gonna go ahead and just send you over to miss gabriella and she's gonna work with us on a craft and then we're gonna get to our fun story about our friend paul This is crafting time with Miss Gabriela and today I have a lovely craft prepared just for us. Today um, our lesson is called Paul's Travels and His Letters. Have you heard of St. Paul? So I would like you to grab your Paul's Travels and His Letters craft kit. I would like you to grab Mr. Glue Stick. And um, Mr. Sketch sent the sticks, some good workers. And as always, I would like to ask you, are you ready for this fun craft? Let's start. Yeah. So, these are the materials that were inside of Paul's um, Travels craft kit. Okay, and we have these funny looking rectangle, funny looking rectangle um, cardstock with a smaller rectangle inside towards the top and then this shape okay so what we're exploring today is Paul's travels and his letters so this graph is going to be all about Paul's letters we're going to be decorating these as um, a pen or a pencil and this is going to be the um, the actual letter so let's start by decorating this one okay so we're going to start decorating this one, and this is going to be the pen, in this case, of the pencil. And I'm using my craft kit so that I protect the surface that I'm working on. And I'm going to leave the top area for an eraser. And what I'm going to do is just draw some lines so I have decorated this um, pencil and now we're going to add glue to the back and and paste it on top here of these uh, popsicle stick and we're going to do it in a diagonal way right so it's not going to match the same vertical shape is going to be diagonal because let me show you when we're writing the letters i want the effect to look like paul is writing so now i have written paul's letters here at the top to remind us of the central theme of this craft 
and then I have written a little bit of a start of one of Paul's letters and you can find these letters in the Bible and you will learn these really exciting um, story uh, stories in uh, furthermore with Mr. Jeremy. So what I have written here is this letter is from Paul chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. Paul had a lot of good things to do and one of them was writing letters to help their young churches get started. So this is ask you, tell your family and your friends and you share this story. You can have this effect of Paul writing letters. Congratulations! Look at what we have made together. Um, I encourage you to share this wonderful story of Paul's travels and letters with your family and your friends. As always, I would like to remind you that you are deeply loved. Have a wonderful week. Welcome back! How was your craft? Was it so good? Can I see it? Oh, wow. Those are great. Oh my goodness. Those are excellent. Well done, friends. <laughs> well done. Now, it is so good to be with you today. I'm so excited to see your crafts. So if you remember last week, we had a friend named Saul who then turned into a friend named Paul because he was struck down by the big lightning, like light source, and then got blind, and then, you know, you get it, right? We'll recap that here in a second. So, Paul, Saul, same person. Did a lot of really important stuff after he was uh, had his, his big moment where he changed. So let's uh, let's get into it. So it goes back to the beginning, right? In the beginning, there was a baby that was born, and his mother and father named him Saul. Now, they named him Saul after the first king of Israel, and his home was a city called Tarsus, and that was close to the sea. Now, as the boy grew up, he helped his father in the shop. Now Saul's father made tents. And even though Saul's family lived far from Rome and were Jewish, they were made Roman citizens like many others in the city. Now, perhaps this had something to do with making tents for the Roman army, but yeah. Now, Saul heard many languages on the streets of Tarsus, but it was the language of the synagogue that he loved the most. His father and he read the Torah together, and Saul was very serious about knowing the Hebrew Bible. Now, Saul grew, and when it was time, he decided to go to the great city of Jerusalem so he could have the best of the teachers, and he waved goodbye to his family and home in Tarsus and traveled to the holy city. Now, when Saul entered the city through a great high gate, he first went to the temple. And he worshipped there. Uh, this is probably also where he studied and worked. Now, his teacher, Gamaliel, or another rabbi in Gamaliel's family, Saul wanted to be one of the Pharisees one of those who worked hard to understand and keep all the laws of the Torah. Now, Saul worked hard to understand and keep the laws. He had no time or patience for people who didn't keep the laws. And then one day he heard about the followers of the way, if you remember that, the followers of the way. They thought that the Messiah had come. They thought it was Jesus of Nazareth. Now when Saul heard that, he became so angry. The Messiah was supposed to drive away the Roman soldiers and rule with justice and mercy. But Jesus was a criminal who was going to be crucified. Besides, in the law, it says that God curses any criminal who is hung upon a tree. So these people were telling lies about God. And so Paul had to stop. Saul had to stop them from saying those things. Now Stephen, who was one of the most important followers of the way, now, these priests in the temple, they decided to punish him. So he was taken outside the city walls to be killed. Now, Saul held the coats of the one who threw stones at Stephen until he died. And then Saul was given a letter by the high priest to go to Damascus to catch more followers of the way to bring them back to Jerusalem for punishment. So Saul traveled to Damascus. Now, you've heard this part of the story. Remember how that after he climbed up on the road to the city, there was a great light and it was so bright that it knocked him to the ground and he became blind. And in the darkness, the voice came to him saying, Saul, Saul, why are you trying to hurt me? Why are you persecuting me? All Saul could say was, who are you, Lord? The voice answered him, I am Jesus, the one you were persecuting. Get up 
and go into the city. You will be told what to do. Now Saul tried to get up and look for the path, but he was blind. So he was led into the city and sent to a place on a straight street. And for three days he went without food or water. And then in the chaos and the darkness of his blindness, he heard another voice. Hello, Saul. I am Ananias. I was sent by Jesus to lay hands on you and bless you. And when Ananias' hands touched Saul's face, scales like the scales from a fish fell from his eyes and he could see. Then Ananias baptized him. Saul was changed forever. He could feel the power of the Holy Spirit growing inside of him. And then Saul and Ananias ate together. Now slowly Saul regained his strength. And when he was better, he went to the synagogue to tell his fellow Jews the good news about what had happened to him. When they heard what Saul said, they tried to kill him. They even put guards at the city gate to catch him if he went away. But the followers of the way hid Saul in the city and they couldn't find him. Now one night when it was dark, Saul and a small group of the followers of the way climbed quietly to the top of the city wall. They carried a large basket and lots of rope. They tied that rope to the basket, and then Saul climbed inside. They lowered him down the wall, and then he disappeared into the dark. And Saul went into the desert of Arabia. He was confused, right? He needed to understand what God wanted him to do. He he had come to Damascus to catch followers of the way, but now he was one of them. What does that mean? So Saul prayed. He watched the empty desert and listened to the silence. He came so close to God, and God came so close to him that he knew what God wanted him to do. He was to travel to the ends of the earth and tell everyone what had happened to him. His work was to try and say how his hate was turned into love and to begin churches where people could show how this was done. He was also to write letters to help new churches do this. So Saul began his work. He sailed across the sea. He walked across the land. He went back to Jerusalem with Peter, James, and the others there, now called Christians. Now they were suspicious, but they finally said to keep telling the story to the Gentiles and the non-Jews. Saul even changed his name. He was traveling so much in the Roman Empire that he began to use his Roman name, Paul. Now, Paul's work was to start churches, but he also wrote letters to young churches to help them with their problems. He wrote to the Philippians and the Ephesians. He wrote to the Thessalonians and the Corinthians. He even wrote to the Romans and told them that he wanted to visit and go to Spain. Now, Paul turned toward Jerusalem for the last time. And as soon as he came into the city and went to the temple, He went to make a sacrifice. But he was still a Nazarite, keeping a strict Jewish law, as well as being a Christian. And people shouted that he didn't belong there. Some began to push him. And the Roman soldiers came running. They pushed people back with their shields and swords and spears. And they saved Paul's life and marched him to the fortress of Antonia. The Roman soldiers decided to beat him find out why the Jews wanted to kill him, but that was when Paul told them he was a Roman citizen. He had to be taken to the Roman courts. He was taken to Sarah on the coast. After about two years, he was put on a ship that was sailing to Rome to be judged in the law courts there. Paul sailed to Rome. His ship sank. Now, he he was a prisoner in his own house. A soldier guarded him, but he could go visit friends while he was waiting for the Roman court to decide what he had done wrong. Now, some say Paul went on to Spain and then came back to Rome. Now, others think that he was executed after the Great Fire, which burned Rome in the year 67. But I like to think that Paul is still traveling to the ends of the earth. Now, Paul's work was to tell his story and to write letters. And in that process, he became the story himself. And his letters are still being read in churches this day. Now, I wonder, what part of the story did you like best? I wonder what part was the most important part. I wonder if there was any part we could leave out and then still have all the story we need. 
All right, friends, it was so delightful to get to tell the story with you today. So I'll leave you with your benediction and our doxology. Sing along if you know it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. See you later.